Press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. I'm with Sitaram Yachuri, the General Secretary of the Communist Party of India, Marxist. Um, Mr. Yachuri, welcome to the print. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This place, AKG Bhavan, which is in the heart of Delhi, only three elections ago, only 15, uh, 14 or 15 years ago, to, after the 2004 elections, was the heart of the political scene. But today, you are a shadow of your former self. The party is a shadow of its former self, and this is a really quiet place. Are you, are you missing the hustle bustle? <laughs> It'll happen. It'll again happen. I'm sure it'll happen. You're right. I mean, the party is in a much smaller position or weaker position than it was in 2004. But uh, nevertheless, it's still an important, uh, has an important role to play in bringing together the efforts for an alternative secular government at the center. So what are you doing to, to creating, towards creating this alternative? The, that one is that the foremost uh, objective must be to defeat the BJP and its allies. Okay. For that, we have, uh, what we are saying is that we should try and maximize the pooling of anti-BJP vote. Mm -hmm. And this will happen at every, uh, st in every state at the state level. So what does that mean? Explain to us. So for example, in UP, what is going to happen? In Bengal, how are things going to play out? You see, in UP, the main uh, uh, fulcrum will be the SPBSP alliance. Okay. And around that, the other secular parties will have to rally. Including the Congress? Including the Congress. And in uh, Bengal, I mean, what we have decided and what I think is the general sentiment in Bengal is to maximize the anti-BJP and the anti trinamool Congress votes. But then what happens then with the CPM or with the left parties? Yeah, the left parties will be contesting and the entire left front will be contesting and then... With who? Hmm? With whom? With both, uh, I mean, Trinamool and the BJP. Okay, you will contest against the Trinamool and the BJP. BJP. Does this mean you will contest with the Congress? That uh, we will have to decide what the Congress will do. Okay. Uh, and then what we have uh, said there is that we will prioritize and contest the seats that the left front will decide on. Okay. And in the rest we will give a call for defeating the BJP and the TMC. But would you like to contest with the Congress? That, uh, I mean, well, let us see uh, how the situation will develop. It's still, it's, it's still not yet very clear as to where the Congress would be going. Okay. But in 2016, in the Assembly elections, the Congress and the left one contested together. Yeah. I mean, there was an adjustment between the Congress and the left. So right. there was a, I mean, a sort of a no contest against each other pact, sort of. And that, did that work, do you think? Well, to some extent it worked, to a l large extent it didn't because it was a little too early for people to transfer their votes. Mm -hmm. I mean, traditionally, it's been the Congress versus the Communists in Bengal. Okay. And, and that vote to suddenly find themselves moving to the, towards each other is, is a difficult proposition. It'll take some time, but I think... So you're saying the people were not used to it or they were not comfortable with the idea? They are not comfortable with the idea. But three years later, now 2019 elections, it'll be about three years. Mm. Do you think people are more comfortable with that? Well, one thing is for clear, people in the state are, are against uh, what is happening to democracy within Bengal under the Trinamool Congress rule. Mm -hmm and against the entire communal polarization that is taking place and particularly remember Bengal is a border state and coming from uh, I mean bordering Bangladesh mm -hmm. and with this entire anti-Bangladeshi uh, uh, tirade that the BJP RSS have let loose that is creating a lot of uh, divisions, problems, tensions, fear, hatred and violence. But even if you're anti-TMC in Bengal and anti-BJP um, in Bengal, the TMC and the Congress and yourselves could ally together in other states. Well, the TMC doesn't exist in other states. That is the, that is the reality. In Tripura, you have TMC? No, uh, it's gone en bloc to the BJP. Okay. I mean, so the, the TMC is only Bengal specific. So like the Lugudism is only Andhra specific. So you're, you're still a small player, but if the Congress and the TMC um, are opponents in Bengal, they could support each other elsewhere in the state. Or you're saying that what happens in Bengal stays in Bengal? What happens in Bengal stays in Bengal. Remember 2004 also, Bengal, Tripura and Kerala. We fought against the Congress while saying that we wanted the Vajpayee government out. Mm -hmm. And, and we succeeded in doing that. And in Kerala, the people responded by electing 18 of the left front, uh, left democratic front, out of the 20 seats that the state sends to the parliament. So could you have a 2004 type of model again? 
that is the only model that is possible what i, I you see please remember the history of our uh, uh, politics also right from the defeat of indira gandhi emergency exit mm -hmm. the janta party that formed the government the party itself was formed after the election right in 1996 when devagoda became the prime minister the united front was formed after the election mm -hmm. in 2004 when manmohan singh dr manmohan singh became the prime minister yeah. the upa was formed after the election okay so, so the common minimum program which was brokered in a sense by your predecessor harkishan singh sujit was done after the 2004 Four election after so you feel that the same experiment could be undertaken i mean it's only natural given the diversity in, in india and given the the huge uh, nation that we are and uh, the different parties having different uh, uh, influ level of influences among the people in different states mm -hmm. that these uh, these sort of an adjustments so understanding in order to maximize the pooling of anti bjp vote will essentially take place at the state level so the bjp is the pole star in a sense against which you are fighting yes at the moment because they are in power and what they are doing to the country but it, so you are removing the bjp and prime minister narendra modi and that is his criticism of this so called mahagathbandhan which has not yet been created you see mahagathbandhan or whatever you call it that will only happen post elections at the national level okay they will be gathbandhans at the state level mm -hmm. and that is the only natural course and we are why are we against the bjp that's because of what the bjp is doing to the country and the people and we we have not seen a government like the one we have for the last four and a half years which has imposed so many burdens on the living and the livelihood of the people mm -hmm. we have not seen a government which in the name of uh, cow protection or model policing has been targeting and murdering dalits and uh, muslims in particular but just to come back to the gathbandhan story so do you think that several gathbandhans in several states can become a mahad gathbandhan after the election of course they will so the whole can be more than a sum of its parts of course so it is it's always been that in india and the question of who the prime minister will be which is what everybody is asking is that a question no that is a question that will be decided only after the elections like it should be in a parliamentary democracy we are not a presidential we are not a presidential form so how how are you going to decide that that will be decided on which is the largest party that will emerge after the election mm -hmm. amongst the secular parties okay. and on that basis do consultations with all of this that will be decided but remember mr yashri the bjp is not going to be easy to defeat of course you know that's why that's why the need to maximize the pooling of all uh, anti bjp votes and do you think that other parties are beginning to think the same way whether it's the the ncp in maharashtra the congress of course um, other parties of course of course i think i think everybody has learned the lesson that unless this government because of its policies is defeated mm -hmm. we cannot either improve the livelihood conditions of the people or the unity integrity of our country look at what is happening all over, all over the country and look at what is happening to all the institutions of our constitutional our constitutional authorities like what like the cbi the rbi the supreme court the judiciary as a whole i mean the interference in that the entire system of uh, education and research you seen these speeches two days ago at the science congress mm -hmm. I mean, it's supposed to That's be the right. Congress of the of the scientific minds. I mean, it's it's been turned into a pseudo science conference. The fact that Akhilesh Yadav is now the CBI is going to go after Akhilesh Yadav. What do you what's the message you see there? That that is the straightforward blandishment. That is the weapon that uh, this government has been using. They've been using two things together: either appeasement through monetary uh, sources, mm -hmm. at the same time threatening through CBI and uh, ED and all other institutions. So in a state like UP where the uh, Samajwadi and the BSP are likely to come together what happens to the Congress it could there's no place for the Congress in a alliance no once the Samajwadi party and the BSP decide on their seats i'm sure that uh, discussions with the others will happen mm -hmm. i'm sure i mean i think uh, they're also as interested in doing that and they've already declared that as far as mrs gandhi and rahul gandhi are concerned those seats they're not going to contest so just two seats they have declared these two so far but do you think they could give i think i think it will uh, i mean some sort of an understanding will emerge now the cpm is like you admitted yourself a shadow of its former self you only are in power in kerala what happens there 
in kerala it will be the udf and the ldf and the bjp which is now uh, you know trying to emerge uh, uh, there in the state but so you're fighting against the congress in the state but you could fight together with the congress at the general election in the general election in the general elections again is it will be state specific like for instance no in uh, kerala i'm asking in kerala no it will be uh, against the congress okay mm. in kerala in Kerala, it will be against the Congress. So, with the Congress in Bengal and against the Congress in Kerala? Yeah, well, it depends. As I said, which is the ruling party in the state? Which is the one that, that is posing greater dangers to democracy, etc.? That is why you decide. When the emergency was imposed, we went with everybody to restore emergency, I mean, uh, democracy. When secularism is threatened, when the foundation of a constitution is threatened, We'll make all efforts to ensure that this, these forces are defeated. But isn't that an essential contradiction in terms? You're with a party, with the Congress in Bengal, and you're against the Congress. No, we are not with How the... How do you explain yourself? Again, to again, again, again. Don't conclude we are with the Congress in Bengal. We are not... But you were with the Congress in 2016. And I mean, I get, that was a seat adjustment thing. Like, take for instance, Maharashtra. So you would like the, to be with the Congress no, in Bengal? We, we, no, I mean, in, Ma, in Bengal, what we are saying is that if, if at all, it depends on what the Congress decides. Okay. If at all uh, that sort of a possibility arises, it, it but you would like to go with the Congress in Bengal because you are a much weaker power today. So you would like to align with somebody that is relatively no, strong. Again, I say I wouldn't put it that way that we we'll would like to go with the Congress. I'd say we'll want to maximize the anti-BJP, anti-Trinamool Congress. Absolutely, votes. and the Congress is really the only other party with which you can. But it all again depends on whether Congress is uh, willing to share that objective of maximizing the pooling of anti-BJP and. Anti of course. So, but the essential contradiction. Uh, it remains, which is that you're with the Congress in Bengal and against the Congress in Kerala. Kerala has always been that. Kerala has always been a bipolar thing. In 2004, we were against the Congress. Remember, in 2004, when we supported the UPA government, hmm. the left as a whole had 61 members in the Lok Sabha. Right. Out of the 61, 57 entered the Lok Sabha, defeating the Congress. 57. Oh. And yet you <laughs> supported the Congress. Congress. Yes, from the we, we supported the, from, from the outside because that was the need of the hour for the country. And then you withdrew as well from when the. When they broke from the common minimum program. Right. On the Indo US yes, nuclear deal. Do you think that that was now? Let's, let's just, you know, I just one quick question on that. Do you think that was a historic bl blunder to withdraw? No, I wouldn't say a blunder. It was a blunder for them to have proceeded on something that was not part of the. But government. be that as it was. Uh -huh. But you, would, you still withdrew. And in a sense, that was the end of the left as we saw it. Because in the 2009 elections, you performed very badly. No, I mean, I, I wouldn't just put it for that uh, reason. But what, what is it was that we failed to make it an election issue. Right. And I that mean, was, it was, that was a yeah, Because it was not something that the people had actually internalized. And, so, and that was a mistake. So it was a mistake in failing to understand that the nuclear, Indo-US nuclear deal in 2008 was not really such a big issue domestically. No, people did not perceive it as a the big issue domestically. But now people are saying, I mean, what, what did you gain? No, what did you, what did you gain because of the deal so far? Okay, let me ask you, let me bring you back to Kerala and to the Sabrimala issue, which is still a very big controversy in Kerala. Mm. What are you doing? Your government is in power. You see, there is a Supreme Court verdict. Yeah. The left has been in power in Kerala from 1957. Absolutely. Uh, coming and going. It's never happened earlier. So why didn't you no, touch no, upon no, the Sabrimala no, issue then? No, yeah, because nobody went to the court and the court decided and gave its verdict saying that women should be permitted entry. Mm -hmm. Now, as an elected government, we think it's the constitutional responsibility of every elected government to actually implement the Supreme Court verdict. Which is what you're doing. Exactly. So, th what does that mean? So, therefore, you will allow women to go into Sabrina. It's not we allowing. Well, it's the, Supre it. the Supreme Court is allowing. Okay. Uh, Supreme Court has decreed <laughs> that a woman should be allowed in the temple. Mm -hmm. and, and that is the decision that, that no, you see, Supreme Do you Court. agree with that? Do you no. agree with that verdict? Verdict, once it is given, the elected government which is on oath on, under this constitution, the Supreme Court, which is the under oath of this constitution, mm -hmm. will have no other option but to implement the court verdict. So why is it that a communist government in 1957 did not open the doors of Sabrimala to women? Because that was, that was uh, not something at that point of time which we, volunt we volunteered. We even now we are not volunteering. It was a Supreme Court verdict that we are implementing. You are not volunteering for what? 
for, for doing what you are saying, you know, opening the temple for the women. The Supreme Court said this has to be done and so it is being done. So you're not and, and believe, I mean, uh, remember, we believe in gender, gender equality and we will sincerely implement it. But when you say you're not volunteering, what does that mean? That it was not our initiative. Okay. It was the court initiative. And who are the people who went to the court asking for this permission? Just look at the credentials of those groups that went. Mm -hmm. And then you will see what is the bigger plot. <laughs> so what do you think? So what is the bigger plot? The bigger plot is to utilize that issue in order to create communal polarization. Mm -hmm. And for the BJP hoping that they will make an entry. Mm -hmm. They will make an entry into the po political life in uh, Kerala. For, from where they have not been able to make a breakthrough so far. So you're saying that the Sabrimala issue is being used by pro-BJP petitioners to gain an entry politically? By, it is being used directly by the RSS and the BJP in order to polarize communally the state, the people, so that they will politically gain. That is their objective. And the, B and the CPM government was not a volunteer into opening the gates of Sabrimala? CPM government was Im implementing the verdict of the Supreme Court. Okay. And in fact, uh, uh, please remember, it was the president of the BJP yeah. who had said that if the court verdict is implemented, then we have the right to demand the dismissal of this government by the central government. It is our central, our government at the center. Now, can, is that not contempt of court? Hmm. I wish the Supreme Court had so motto, taken up this as a contempt of the court. Okay, so last question, Mr. Yachuri. The CPM, uh, a shadow of its former self, a rump of a party, not even a national party anymore. No, it is. we are still a national party. <laughs> we are. But, but we, and we have to strengthen and consolidate so that we continue to be a national party. So after the 2019 elections, do you think, like your predecessor, Harkishan Singh Sujit, the CPM could play a bigger role than itself actually, than it's than the seats that I think it, we already are playing a bigger role uh, than what our, like our, our electoral representation is. Because remember, you can only measure the influence of a party not only through the electoral results, which is, which is very important, I'm not discounting that, but also on its ability to mobilize the people to influence the agenda before the country. Why is it today that everybody is talking of the peasantry and the, the youth, unemployment and the uh, agrarian distress? Mm -hmm. That's because of the big struggles that, uh, that, that were launched by us. And, and that is why they have now come to the forefront of national agenda. Every single party today, remember in the 2019 election, will have to, by force, focus on these two very important issues. Agrarian distress. As agrarian distress and unemployment. And you feel that you have brought these issues to the fore? I think we played a major role in, in uh, bringing it to the fore. Especially with the farmer rallies in Maharashtra and Delhi. And Maharashtra and Delhi and now from on this 8th and 9th, tomorrow and the day after, the All India Industrial Strike. Yeah. Along with that is going to be a Grameen Bharat Ban. And it's going to be a very big action for the next two days. Okay. Mr. Yachuri, thank you so much for speaking to the print. Thanks. This is Jyoti Malhotra. Please continue to watch the print YouTube channel. It's alive and buzzing.